succeed here. Nicole, thanks so much for being here. Um, I'm going to let you tell us a little bit about your work and your business and what you do. Yes, thank you for having me, Lori. So I am Nicole, and I am the owner and creative director of Nicole Marie Creative Studios. And with that, I help small businesses level up their business with uh, design. So branding strategy, uh, website design, graphic design, uh, anything and everything design related for small businesses. Great. So that sounds like great. Fun work. Exciting, right? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Everything's a little bit different. <laughs> exactly. Uh, so we'll dive right into some of the questions that I had for you. Perfect. And the first one is, what do you think is the most important factor when it comes to just general website or portfolio design? Mm -hmm. The first and most important thing for me when it comes to website design is always the most simplest and overlooked is the goal and the purpose of the website. I can't tell you how many times I'm meeting with clients and we're trying to figure out the design and the layout of their website and they don't even know what kind of action they want visitors to take on their site. They don't know the full purpose and we're trying to go this way and that way and have all the things, the website do all the things. And really it's important for us to take a step back and say, what is the goal of your website? Uh, what are you wanting people to do once they visit that site? And then directing them from there. And it sounds so like, duh, but I, once you're in the weeds of designing a website, you kind of lose sight of that. So always coming back to that main goal and purpose. Um, from there, that dictates where we're gonna go with the navigation. Navigation is a huge part of website design. So you don't want to overwhelm your visitors when they visit your website with click here, click here, or 10,000 things on the navigation. Um, if you confuse them, you lose them. So I tell clients to stick to like five, six things on the navigation, um, keeping that simple and basic. Um, I'm not a huge fan of using cutesy terms in the navigation either because sometimes I'll land on a website and they'll say something cute and I'm like, I have no idea what that means. I don't know where we're going. <laughs> um, so being clear and concise with your navigation. Again, once you've thought through your goal, it should be easy to think of, okay, what navigation do I really need on my site anyway to make sure that they get from point A to point B? So um, after navigation and layout, I would say focusing on branding and colors and staying consistent and things like that. But it's really that I love the fact that that goal really helps it to all come together because I feel like that's what uh, whenever I'm speaking and coaching people with their food photography, it's that, you know, what is your why? You know, when it comes to our businesses, what are what is our why? But even with our photos and our photo style, it's like, what is your why and what are you trying to accomplish? And then things follow suit and that kind of, that's great that that also applies to, you know, designing and layout of a website. Absolutely. If you're ever getting stuck go back to that, go back to the goal, go back to your why. Uh, and like you said, everything follows suit after that usually. So anytime I'm stuck, it's usually because I've wandered off somewhere and thought, oh, followed this cute little idea that had nothing to do with the purpose and the design of the website to begin with. So bringing it back to that, again, colors, branding, all of that leads back to that anyway. So um, that's my biggest tip. Is, okay. is remembering that and letting everything follow suit. Great. And the, the um, if you confuse them, you lose them. I love that. Mm -hmm. And the clarity, because even that comes into, I know a lot whenever we're even writing descriptions about the work that we do or, you know, social, what we do in our social media blurbs and things like that. It's, it's fun and creative to be a, a little bit cutesy yeah. sometimes, but if you aren't very direct with what people, what you do, some people don't understand. And it's important to remember that, that there are people out there who may not understand. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Because everyone's always like, you need a catchy headline or something flashy. So you start thinking of all of the cute, fun, interesting ways to say who you are, what you do, or to grab their attention. And sometimes you're just, it's too much. It's just too much. Right. Exactly. Um, 
And sometimes that's hard to know when you've kind of gone off in that direction. I'm sure as a writer as well, you know all about that. <laughs> right. But yeah. yeah, making sure the clarity comes first, for yeah. sure. That's a great tip. It's really great. And talking about, so a lot of us who are watching this, we do a lot of different things. So mm -hmm. we might have photographs that we want to show off or we are, you know, creating products and foods and things that we want to show off, or we might be writing and doing all of the above. So when it comes to categorizing the content, what should we know about that to make it, you know, a better experience for other people? Going back to being clear and concise. So really thinking about what categories there are that you do, um, audiences that you serve, and even thinking it through that way. So you may be serving one audience with one product or service and another with another product and service as well. And that's something to keep in mind if you've got two different audiences visiting your site for perhaps two different purposes. Um, so being that would be a great time to really dive into like your navigation. So where can you lead the people who are coming to your site for one thing or the other? Um, that's one way to think about it, to categorize the content. Um, there's several different ways you could go about it. It's just a matter of thinking it back from square one and where you want to lead them um, and making sure there's nothing to like get in their way of getting there. And those categories would be potentially one of those okay. things to get in their way. So okay. thinking it through as clearly as possible. Okay, great. Good to know. Okay, now I want to talk about one of my favorite subjects and that's color. Yes. So uh, do you have any color guidelines or best practices when it comes to color? I, I really am a, a true believer in that, you know, finding those brand colors that represent you accurately and everything. It's, it's also a lot of fun when you have a business. But um, what might be some things we should keep in mind when it comes to color? Yeah. If you don't already have brand colors set aside for your business, um, I would totally suggest doing that. Um, so that you can consistently use those moving forward in all of your marketing um, assets. Uh, as a photographer, I realize it can be a little difficult to come up with those colors because you don't want to have anything competing with those photos. So a neutral color scheme for photographers is always a good idea. I mean, there's many different neutral palettes that you could have. It doesn't always have to be black and white. Um, but more neutral color schemes really lets your um, photos breathe um, and have like take up their own space and shine for what they are. But sometimes we wanna have fun with colors too and that's totally okay. So if you're one of those people who wants to have fun with colors, do it. What I would suggest is throwing together your photos and start seeing what colors pop out. I'm, I know most photographers have their style. Are you light and airy? or a bit more moody and what kind of colors come out that complement that photo style. Um, focusing on that and seeing what you can pick out is for me the fun part as well. There's lots of tools uh, that you can use, like Canva has a great little color picker. There's web uh, plugins that you can use to find color pickers, Photoshop. So throw some of your favorite photos together, some photos that you think really speak for who you are as a photographer or photos that speak to your brand and who you are that just feel right to your business and picking out colors from there and, and running with that color scheme. Once you have a color scheme, I say stick with it if you can, um, which is when those neutrals are helpful okay. as your style kind of changes a bit. So I would say you don't need more than three or four colors anyway. Okay. When it comes to website design, you're going to only use those colors typically for like fonts or buttons, okay. just little elements of your site to give it a little more oomph in your design. And then again, letting your photos be the driving force of the design. Oh, those are perfect. Those tips are so great. Uh, that's, I, I love that you bring that up and I have to use it as an example because I've worked with you and um, my portfolio, I do keep that pretty neutral because I, I'm doing different kinds of, I have a core style, but I do different kinds of photos. But um, the photos that I liked are some, are some of the ones, or the color schemes that I like. 
come from photos that I've taken on California Central Coast. And I love all those muted colors. You did such a great job of helping me understand that and, uh, you know, picking colors out of those images, you know, with those tools to kind of represent me for the other things that I'm doing, like in my courses with handouts mm -hmm. and, and knowing that it's not always just going to be on your website. Mm -hmm. It can be how you design other things in your social media platforms and all of that kind of thing. Exactly. I think that's a great way, a great thing to remember too, when you're picking those colors is what are you going to need those colors for? It does go usually beyond your website. So will those colors appear on your business cards? Uh, any other marketing assets, PDFs, your social media feed, anything like that. So thinking of your needs design wise that go even beyond your your website design and how those colors would fit in for that as well. So great tips. That's great. Okay. Uh, are there anything, is there anything that comes to mind for you that we should stay away from in our design, like hard no no's in the industry that uh, some of us may not know? <laughs> hard no no's. <laughs> um, for this one, I think it's really clutter. Okay. That's, I mean, I know that's kind of a vague answer, but you want to leave open space on your site um, and in design in general. Um, too cluttered, it's too much for our eyes. So I'd say hard no-nos are also just bodies of text, just walls of text. Um, something that I see people forgetting to do a lot in marketing materials as well as website is forgetting to use your headers and your subheaders and your body text. Okay. And you just go straight into body text or it's just all one font size. Okay. Um, don't go nuts with that. That's another no, no is using all the fonts and all the sizes. Um, but really picking just when you're picking your colors as well, pick your fonts, pick your headings. So have a font style that you use for heading one, heading two, subheading and your body text and never veer too far away from those four fonts. You don't need much more than that but utilizing them in your design so that you have, you can break up the text so people can read it. When people come to your website, only about 80% of visitors will read uh, your text and they'll only read headlines. Okay. And then other than that, they're gone. So if you don't have those headlines that are bringing them in and then that subheading that keeps following them down those paragraphs, you're, you've lost them. 80% of them won't read anything. So I think that's something that I don't see utilized enough on websites. I'll go through and it's just wall of text, wall of text. I'm like, what do you, what do you want me to read? <laughs> Give me something to like hold on to and then keep me going. So utilizing those uh, headers for okay. sure. That's a great tip and a great statistic to know as well. Yeah. And I love what you said about, you know, no clutter in the white space. The same thing kind of goes when I'm talking to people about food photography, because people are, they're afraid of negative space and of white space. As a creator, we're afraid of it, but as a consumer, we tend to like it. So whether we're reading or when we see photography that has really cool negative space worked in, they're so eye-catching when you're scrolling through Instagram or something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, so I try to teach people not to be afraid of it in that aspect because it helps with creativity. So that's really interesting that you pulled it into, uh, that it applies to design of websites and web pages as well. Absolutely. Great. Let's see. Is there, let's see, is there anything else going through my notes here? Is there anything that we've touched on that uh, you want to expand on that uh, here? I'd like, I don't know if you're prepared to answer this one, but I'd love to know if there are any fonts that mm -hmm. like specific fonts mm -hmm. that um, either to go towards or to stay away from. Yeah. I think that comes down to your branding just a little bit of if you're light and airy or more feminine or more masculine or what kind of uh, what's more your style is and your target market but safe fonts are always a sans serif or a serif um usually one of each pairs really well so picking a nice serif font for your header subheader is serif sans serif and going from there those pair really well together um sans serif is they're the ones without the little feet so uh, those are really popular right now you'll see that a lot in design and that's a nice one 
just very modern look, clean. Um, but yeah, you don't be afraid to play with uh, your fonts and scripts if, again, that appeals to your target demographic. Okay. Um, yeah. So you mentioned uh, that particular font being popular right now. Mm -hmm. uh, so that kind of leads me to another question because obviously trends change in websites and design and things like that. What would your recommendation be to like revisit your site for an update as far as a timeline? Is it every year, every five years? What would you suggest to people? For full redesign, you can give that time. Okay. Uh, that, that's uh, really up to you and your business and every few years or so. But a website is, should be living and breathing. You should always be updating your website. One of my big tips uh, that I wanted to mention today was not having stale content on your site. Okay. For a photographer, that might be pretty easy to update your portfolio or your content often. Um, for other business owners, they might find a harder time updating that content. But that's how you're going to be found online is new content. Google searches for websites that are constantly updating um, so that they know that they're giving the visitor new consistent information. Okay. So if you haven't touched your website in a long time, that is do that now. <laughs> um, whatever that looks like, even if that's just changing a few things here and there. Um, but stale content is going to be the worst thing for a website that you want something that, so that's an easy way to every month or so going onto your website at least and updating your content or making sure everything's current, uh, throwing in new photos every once in a while, especially if in your business changes at all or your photography style or your writing, anything like that, you should be able to update pretty easily. Okay. Um, as far as like keeping up with the trends and a bigger redesign and stuff, I'd say that's something to take a look at every few years and make sure it still reflects you and your business and doesn't look outdated in any way. There's loads of things you can do to quickly refresh your website without overhauling it completely, just like changing the fonts. If you find the font that you're using and you just don't love it anymore and it seems a bit outdated, super easy to change the font site wide and have that be a bit of like a refresh, you know? Okay, those are great tips and great to kind of have that in mind as we move ahead as far as the timing, mm -hmm. uh, what we need to stay in touch with, you know, and, uh, you know, keeping, especially the monthly, I have a hard time with that, you know, sticking with updating the monthly content, I can definitely do a better job of that for sure. Oh yeah, it's so easy to like build your site, especially sometimes that just takes so much out of you to get your site even up and running that once it is, you're like, done. It's <laughs> right. Live exactly. and it is over there and I am done. Uh, but yeah, not forgetting about it and updating it often will really help not only with SEO and being found organically online, which is probably one of the main purposes for everybody to have a website anyway, mm -hmm. is so that they can be found online. Keeping con your content updated is going to help you be found that way. Um, and then make sure that when your visitors do land on your site, that they have a bed of new good information. Okay, great. Is there anything else that you wanted to add for us today that we haven't covered yet? Yeah, today I know that we're going to be talking, we're talking mostly to photographers, mm -hmm. um, people in your industry, mm -hmm. and I did want to mention a fun little word called alt text, and okay. I'm not sure if um, you're familiar with alt text or any of your uh, people are, but that is my biggest tip for you guys on your websites. Okay. Um, especially if it's just portfolio focused, if you're mostly just using your website to showcase your work and your photos, and there's not a lot of text on there. Um, alt text gives you the opportunity to tell Google this photo is this. Okay. So it's just the most websites have a really easy way of finding the alt text. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, yeah, you're just telling Google, this is an image of this. So okay. that when people are searching things and you can throw keywords in there as well, okay. um, like Central Coast photographer, things like that as well. So you okay. can be found through your images as well on, okay. on the SEO side of things. Okay. So with alt text, if, if it's a, a bowl of berries, mm -hmm. 
it could also work in their like Central Coast photographer in mm -hmm. all in that alt text. Yeah. Okay. That's a great tip. Yeah. And not every photo needs to have like your location or photographer or other things like that. Mm -hmm. Um, you don't want to overwhelm it. It Google will also pick up on that when you're trying to like cheat the system, but yeah, but throwing in keywords here and there and being, uh, telling Google what the image is, but also the stuff that it should be searching as well. Okay. Yeah. And I would think that would probably be a tip that might work for people who are, you know, possibly photographing the foods that they grow for one, mm -hmm. oh, yeah. in possibly the farm or something like that. And Absolutely. then also maybe food writers as well. If, if the image is for an article or something that they wrote, they could yep. put keywords for the actual article in yep. there. Yep. Okay. Absolutely. Those are great tips. Okay. Another easy thing to change is the, um, the file name for the photo. So okay. in that file name, you could put your name or photographer, or you can put some of those keywords in the, the name of the photo okay. that you upload onto the site and Google sees that as well. Okay. So that's another fun way that you can sneak in some of those words. Okay. That's a great tip. All yeah. right. Thank you. Anything else? Let me look at my notes. <laughs> uh, I tried to organize it all. Um, oh, we didn't really talk on calls to action. Oh yeah, on the site, on the site or the landing page. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So another tip is making sure you have clear calls to action on your site. So going back to thinking about what that goal is, what you want people to do once they land on your site, that ultimate action you want them to take. You should have buttons and you should have call outs on your site that say to do that thing. Okay. So if you want people to contact you, that should be the main button on your site. Okay. Uh, each page can have a different call to action. You may have a different purpose for each page. Okay. Um, but thinking it through the design of your site as well of which action leads to where. So usually on home pages, I mean, you might want them to get to know you a bit better. So you, they wanna know who's writing the cookbooks, who's taking the photos, um, why they should trust you with their project. You might wanna first send them to your about page where you can give them all of that information. Um, from the about page, it might be a button like work with me. Here's exactly where you go to schedule time to work with me. Um, or you might find that before they go there, you wanna send them to your, their, to your portfolio. And thinking through those pages okay and those calls to action okay that's a great tip as well to think about that and that would also come into play if you are you know you want people to sign up for a lead magnet or something exactly. like that as well okay exactly great great tips well we really appreciate you talking to us today and i would love for you to tell uh Tell everyone where they can find you, how the best uh, place is to find where you're at on the internet or get in touch. Mm -hmm. Anything you want to share? Of course. So you can find me at my website, which is NicoleMarieCreative.com. I do spell my name a bit weird. <laughs> so that's N-I-K-K-O-L-E-M-A-R-I-E Creative.com, Nicole Marie. Um, and then also on social media, it's n.marie.creative, which is so you can find me on Instagram. I've been having some fun over there. Um, and then if any of this feels super overwhelming to anybody, really figuring out the strategy, the layout, uh, before you even get to the design, um, I do offer consultations as well. So they can hit me up on Instagram or send me an email um, and I'd be happy to chat strategy all day. <laughs> Perfect. That's great. And I can definitely speak to your work. You're good at working with people like me that try to do a little bit themselves, but also mm -hmm. want help with other things. Um, yep. And you're certainly, you do great work to where if they just want to hand it all off to you, yep. <laughs> I would totally trust that decision as well. Yeah. Creative entrepreneurs are my favorite to work with because they value the design, the aesthetic, they get the importance of that. Um, but also sometimes are good at knowing when to pass off the thing that's not <laughs> not their strong suit so right exactly we're a great group to be a part of for exactly sure. exactly well nicole thanks so much for being with us we really appreciate your time of course thank you so much for having me